Well, hello. So today we're going to talk about why a strong Pinterest board strategy is essential when it comes to driving traffic to your website and your business. Board strategy is something I've probably needed to talk to you about for a while. It's I get a lot of questions about it. So today we're going to dig into Pinterest boards, why they're important, how you should get them, and what they do for your overall marketing strategy on Pinterest. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Michelle and I am a Pinterest marketing strategist. I also run Pinterest accounts for clients and I offer coaching services. Like I said, today we're digging into all things board strategy. So if you're a blogger, an e-commerce seller, an online service provider, a coach, any of those online business entrepreneurs, then this video is for you. So what even is a board strategy, right? I mean, don't you just put up random boards and hope it works out? Actually, P Pinterest boards are a really great way to categorize your content. So that's the whole point of a Pinterest board. When you think of being a user of Pinterest, you have your boards and you're like, oh, this is for my daughter's room. I'm gonna pin pins related to my daughter's room onto this Pinterest board. When you are a creator on Pinterest, you are going to categorize your boards based on you know what's relevant in your business so you need to tell pinterest what your account is all about because they want to be able to put your pins in front of the right audience and one of the first ways they do this is by looking at what board that pin is under but before you even start pinning you need to make sure that you have a good board name along with a really good board description. And what does a good board name or a good board description even mean? So when you're talking about naming your boards, you want to make sure that you have some broad boards and some more niche boards. But regardless, we wanna keep those names pretty simple. And when you're doing your keyword research, you're gonna get some really good ideas on what kind of boards might do well on Pinterest by seeing what kind of search terms come up. So digging into keyword research is super important when it comes to developing your board strategy. I would say definitely the first thing you do before you start creating boards should be looking at keywords. And you're not just going to pull out any random keywords. Those keywords need to make sense for your niche and the kind of content that you have. If you have not done any keyword research, I'm going to go ahead and pop a video right up here that shows you exactly how to do that. I also am going to be having an updated keyword research video coming out in the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned for that. With those keywords that you find that are niche related, you're going to make sure they're sprinkled throughout your description, they make sense on your board title, and all of that jazz. That's why it's so important. So that's gonna be the foundation of your boards. In order to have the right boards, do the right keyword research, all of that, you really need to have a handle on who your target audience is, what they might search for when they're looking for what you have to offer. You want to know who you're targeting so you can really kind of get in their brain and start thinking, okay, what kind of search terms might they be searching for when they're looking for the solutions for the problems that they have, right? And if you are in any sort of business, whether you're a blogger, an e-commerce seller, if you're an online service provider, if you're a coach, you are a problem solver. That's what you're doing. You're solving a problem. So you need to attract the audience that is looking for the solution that you offer. And knowing your niche is super important to do that. And then you can dig into your keyword research. Now, it's important when you just decide on Pinterest board names one thing I would recommend is you start with a broad term, okay? So say you're a food blogger and your broad term is chicken recipes. That's great. That's a great board to have. You're going to have a ton of things to pin to that board. You have your broad board, your chicken recipes, and now you want to start thinking about what other boards you can make from that. So sub niches, more specific. So maybe healthy chicken recipes, chicken dinner recipes in 30 minutes, like chicken salad recipes, chicken sandwich recipes, trying to keep those board names between two and three words long is usually best. Now you can, you can go off the rail and do a little long one here and there. None of these rules are hard and fast. So don't feel like, oh, I can't break the rules. 
the rules are made to be bent. Try to see what you can get away with. But overall, most of your boards should be between two and three words long. As you're building your boards, you're always thinking broad topic and then three to five, six subtopics. And this is just to get you started. So doing five main topics with some subtopics, you're going to have a lot of boards. If you only have three main content topics that you have right now with some subtopics, just start there. You're going to start getting more as you start pinning. You're going to get more ideas, that kind of thing. So the important thing is, is to make sure that you have multiple boards that you can pin to because when you're pinning to a for a specific URL, you want to have multiple places you can put that. You don't want one URL just pinned to one board all the time. You want to have multiple places you can spread those pins out that are relevant and that make sense because you don't want to pin your chicken recipe to your favorite desserts board. Like that doesn't make any sense. You're going to confuse the algorithm. You're going to confuse your people. We don't want that. So if you are an established account and you have some pins to clean up, definitely go through, move pins around, put them where they need to be. Um, and that's going to help improve your account a lot just doing that. As you go through and you are developing these boards, a good practice is to kind of go through them about every six months to just make sure that what you have is relevant. Um, and if it's not, if the recipes are still good on there, maybe you just change the board name to be more keyword friendly, something like that. Moving pins around to make sense for those boards. Just go through, audit your boards, see if they make sense for your content still. If you're no longer doing content that's relevant to that board, you can make it secret, you can archive it, you can delete it. Anything like that is fine and it will pull it off and, and you'll be all up to date. So just make sure that they all have descriptions, they have board covers if you're doing board covers. I love a good board cover because it really gives that professional appearance on your Pinterest account. Now, when you are creating brand new boards, or say you have a brand new account and you're just starting to develop your boards, you don't have to pin other people's content to your boards. And you don't, you don't ever have to do that. But one instance that I really do recommend, I like the idea of pinning other people's content to your boards is when you are brand new or when you are developing a brand new board. So the reason behind this is number one, you want boards to have content on them, right? So if you don't have a ton of pins made already, you're just starting your account, that's fine. Just pin other people's content to that board as long as it's relevant. The other thing that it does is it helps Pinterest start to understand what your board is about. So one of the ways that Pinterest is learning about what you are about on Pinterest is through your profile, your about section, your boards, what kind of boards you have there, those keywords, they're scanning that, they're scanning your descriptions to learn your content and what's what it's about. But another thing they're doing is scanning what other pins that they've already indexed, that they have around them to categorize that content. So you wanna pin relevant pins to that board. I always try to do ones that are not competing with anything that I'm doing, but it's relevant. And it will help Pinterest understand what your pins are about when you start pinning your own content. Now, once you get into the flow of pinning, you really don't have to continue pinning other people's content if you don't want to. You can, like there's nothing wrong with pinning other people's content. It's just not a strategy that you need to continue if you don't want to. Now, as far as the number of boards to create, I like to start new accounts with at least 10 boards, but you can have 20, 30 boards if you want. You can have a lot, just as long as they're all relevant. So 30 irrelevant boards, are not going to do it. If you have 10 relevant boards, I'd rather have you do that than 30 irrelevant boards. Now let's talk group boards. So it used to be a strategy that you would try to get to it into as many group boards as you possibly could. You're pinning all your content to these group boards with the hope that somebody on the group will repin your pin to get exposure at that kind of thing. That just doesn't really work anymore and it's not really a strategy that we're using. So don't stress about having to join a bunch of group boards. What I would suggest is if you have friends in the business space or you see other accounts that are complementary to what you're doing but not what you're doing, but probably relevant to your audience, 
Then you can create collaboration boards, group boards for collaborating. So say you're in the fashion niche and you specialize in dresses. Say your whole boutique is just different kind of dresses, spring dresses, summer dresses, whatever. And you find a collaborator that does shoes. You could collaborate with them to come up with different spring styles and you could work with each other to have a collaboration board. So things like that work really well right now and they're really great for your audience. It's a good client experience, which is exactly what you want. So you're really bringing in people that complement what you're doing, but have the same ideal audience. So that is really how I would suggest you use group or collaboration boards. Now I wanna show you a Pinterest account that has a really great board strategy. So you can really kind of see what I'm talking about in real life. This account is called Cook the Story. It's a cooking recipe uh, uh, site, a food blogger. But what I love about her site is it's so clear what she does, right? You can tell she does recipes. She does quick, easy meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I love that she has this amazing description right here. She's got um, a great an about section for her. And you can see on her boards, she's got very clear boards. She's not trying to get cutesy with the names. As much as cutesy is kind of fun for your board names, they're not searchable. When you're going through, you don't want to have like dazzling cookies or something that nobody is going to be searching for. You want to look and have these boards have keywords that people are searching for. So as you can see with this one, she's got side dish recipes, Thanksgiving recipes, sandwiches. She's got very simple, easy to understand boards, and she's got a lot of them. So you can kind of see exactly how this works on a successful Pinterest account. You got these broad keywords along with more niche keywords. And I just love how everything is super simple. Now she does not do board covers. Board covers are never mandatory. You don't have to do them. I just like them and I think they make your account look good. But her account's doing great. She does not have board covers. Like I said, multiple different strategies will work for you. All right, so some of the common mistakes that I see with Pinterest boards are gonna be just cutesy names like I talked about before, just very vague names, maybe going way too overly broad, like, I don't know, recipes. <laughs> you want to be somewhat niche down but broad for some of these board titles. The other common mistake I see is people not adding a description on their boards. So there's no keywords defining what that board is about. That's a big, big issue with Pinterest. And oftentimes you can start gaining traffic just by adding those board descriptions into your boards. It's not a guarantee. Okay. So don't just go add a couple board descriptions, come back to me and say it didn't work. It will help eventually. You got to have a good keyword strategy behind your board descriptions. The other common mistake I see is just pinning irrelevant pins to the wrong board. So they're very cluttered. They don't make any sense. It's not telling Pinterest what your pin, your account is about. So if that's you, that's okay. No judgment. We've all been there. Go back through clean those boards up, move the pins where they need to be, delete them, make them secret, whatever you have to do to get that cleaned up so it makes sense. So to wrap it up, for a board strategy, you wanna make sure you know your niche, you did your keyword research, you're pinning a combination of broad terms with more niche terms, you're keeping those board descriptions down to two to three words, and you're making sure that they all have board descriptions. You're also going through and maintaining them a couple of times a year, getting rid of old boards that don't matter, adding some new boards if you need to, and moving pins to where they need to go. And most of all, we are not just pinning random stuff to our boards and just doing it haphazardly. We're gonna have a strategy and we're going to follow through. So. I hope this video was helpful. If it is, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you can see more of my content and this video can reach more people. If you need some additional help with your Pinterest account, I would love for you to click the links down below. I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. I have a course coming soon that you can join. It is currently October 2024, so the beta launch may be over by the time you see this video but right now we are opening up the waitlist for the beta launch if you want to get on that waitlist cl click that link below and i will let you know as soon as it launches it'll be at a really good price it's still going to be at a good price when it's full price so if you miss the beta launch don't worry i got your back it's going to be, be fine 
I also offer full Pinterest management. So if that's something that you're interested in, of course, the links are down below. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate you all having you here and we will talk next week.